It's October 20, Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum continues its operation. My name is Svetlana Shaparenko and now we will be talking about the situation in the left bank of Kherson region. Joining us online is Yuri Sabolevsky, first deputy head of the Kherson Regional Council. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Good morning. So one of the positive news was about Ukrainian forces coming to the east bank of Kherson region, crossing the Dnipro River. What do we know about this situation? Well, we maintain the information silence. We cannot comment those events. And now it's very important in order not to create obstacles for the work of our security and defense forces. They continue working to make sure that all of our territories, all of our people are liberated as soon as possible. Those who ended up under terrible conditions of occupation, we know how intense is the pressure on them, all those screening measures and forcing to integrate into Russian world, which is currently total. Well, so then let's talk about the cold weather coming. It's a new challenge for the residents of the East Bank of Kherson region. So do we know whether the occupiers are preparing the residential areas for the winter? Well, we don't see any systemic measures taken by the occupational administrations. I mean, any preparations to the heating season. Probably they don't expect that it would be their problem that they would be forced to leave earlier. But currently, it creates a lot of concerns because, in fact, there's a lot of work to be done there in the communities who were affected by Russian terrorism, the terroristic act in Kahovka Dam. Well, the situation with infrastructure is a little bit easier than in the liberated territories because the security and defense forces don't inflict strikes on the critical infrastructure facilities. This is why there, there is no such damage that we experienced in the liberated territories. Well, there are constant talks of screening measures by the occupiers in the East Bank. So did they increase, decrease? What is the situation with this? We see the screening measures intensifying in the Genishes, Genishes region, Genishes district. There are more patrols. There was time when they were absent. There were only stationary check posts and a sporadic check of IDs by the patrols. But those facts, when they were coming directly to some settlements, inspecting it completely this is something that is repeated now they're checking the smartphones laptops computers and the special attention is given to the people who came to those regions just recently and there is also spe special attention to those people who refused to re-register their land plots get russian passports they understand that those people are pro-Ukrainian and respectively the percentage of probability of those people cooperating with the security of and defense forces or with the security service of Ukraine is way higher. So there is again special attention by the occupiers given to these people. Well, we know that the occupiers uh, continue spreading their sus subscription notices in the East Bank. So what is the situation with con conscription of Ukrainian citizens? Well, we know the situations when the people were coming to the conscription offices to get registered because people can't get employed if they're not registered with the conscription offices. And at the same time, they get the notice for medical examination with further mobilization. So there is the risk of high scale mobilization there. Well, so 
Talking about the West Bank of Kherson region, what is the situation in the territories under Ukrainian control? What is the aftermath of the latest shellings? We know that the air raid alert is on right now in Kherson region. Yes, unfortunately, the situation, the security situation is quite difficult. We have one casualty in Bereslav and one more injured in Tehinka. In the city of Kherson itself, just 10 minutes ago, there were sounds of projectiles incoming. I don't have any information about the aftermath so far, but the explosions are heard by Khersonians very frequently. Talking about the preparation to winter, what are the challenges in the West Bank for the time being? Well, the military administrations exercise the preparation, they inspect the networks and have expedited the works to get those consumers connected to water and power supply who were not connected earlier. There are challenges, there are really some problems. We are currently working on that. We need to prepare the maintenance reserves for the cases of significant damage of critical infrastructure. We need to ensure the sustainable operation of the medical institutions in case of any significant damage to make sure that people under any conditions have access to the medical services and it's also actual for our resilience stations we're preparing them for efficient operation for case of necessity how much time is needed to prepare and uh, what are the resources that are missing. Well, it's difficult to say because different, different communities have different needs where there are no shellings. It's easier to, to prepare everything in the areas where the shellings are intense. It's way more difficult to operate there, but I hope that this season will be easier than the previous one because directly after the deoccupation of the West Bank of Kherson region, the occupational forces left ruins behind themselves. They pillaged everything, but what they couldn't pillage, they destroyed. We were able to resume the power and water supply for a large number of consumers, and I hope that this season will be easier again, but it will be dependent on the intensity of the shells. Thank you very much, Mr. Yuri, for informing us on the situation on the East Bank of Kherson region. Joining us was Yuri Sabalevsky, the first deputy head of Kherson Regional Council. Ukraine Media Center will be back in operation on Monday. Thank you for staying tuned. Hello. Sure.